Hi, guys. Welcome to this episode of The Trainer Feed. We are your hosts. I am Angel Sanchez. This is David, David Bravo. And Jacques Delegere. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, cool. We have a good one today. We're going to be chatting with uh, Marie Mance, who's a Pilates instructor. And uh, hopefully we'll get some insight in the world of Pilates from somebody that's actually in it, basically. Um, real quick. R.I.P. DMX. That's my boy. And Prince Philip. And I guess Prince Philip for Jacques. Um, <laughs> I don't yeah, want to yo, smile. No, it's not funny, DMX but... was very inspirational growing up. And his music was fire. And you always hear that in New York City. Bumping and it just, people just blasted all his music. So R.I.P. to him. Prince Philip also. You know, he was he was a philanthropist. He did, you know, you know create a lot of things. But... You know, he's not quite DMX. He's not quite DMX. I mean, in a lot of ways, but yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's uh, let's bring in Marie. Hello. Hi, Marie. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hi, What's up, Marie? <laughs> Sorry for the little mix-up earlier. No, you're totally fine. You're totally fine. Gotta love COVID. How you doing? I am good. I'm good. I'm I'm in a new apartment, so I'm a little Yeah, late. you just moved. Yeah, it it we went from a tiny shoebox to now what feels like a mansion. So Ooh, that's the upgrade. Nice. Gotta love it. Ser seriously, you gotta love COVID for lowering these prices. I hate to say yeah. it. But... This is one. There's one positive. There's a few positives that came out of it. It's New York rentals going down for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, relatively, I guess. I mean, you can't say that. I think, for me at least, I don't think I can move into Soho anytime soon. Even if, yeah, financial. Even, yeah. <laughs> Soho and Chelsea are still pretty. They they lower their rents, but it's still up there. Yeah. Actually, surprisingly, me and my roommate found a spot in Soho for way. I think it was originally like, and we didn't move there, but. I think it was originally like thirty four hundred a month, and it went down to twenty seven hundred a month. Damn, was it a one or two bedroom? It was a two bedroom. Wow. And I, we've actually seen three bedrooms. We almost thought about doing a three bedroom because the rent was like twenty seven hundred for a three bedroom. Wow. In like nice areas That's with an elevator room. building. It did, it wasn't dormant, but it had an elevator. It was three bedroom. We're like, should we make this an office? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Wow. Or you make it a home gym or something. Yeah. The home gym could be your like little acting studio. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So, you know, the, you know, you remember the guys from the gym, right? What? You remember these guys from 76 Street? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to thank you for being on this episode. Uh, I wanted to have somebody who's in the Pilates industry, you know, basically chat with us about it because we've chatted about it in the past, but it wasn't from, you know, somebody that was an instructor or somebody that has, you know, put in time to study about it. Um, what is, or how was your transition into Equinox and into Pilates? Because you were a dancer as well. Yes. Um, I feel like was that how it kind of transitioned in? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure anytime you meet a Pilates instructor, 99% of the time they were dancers or are dancers. Um, just because you get so used to form and biomechanics I mean even in personal training but um I think just like the the little details and the nuances you kind of become obsessed with and then um thankfully I was lucky enough that I had a teacher that was very hands-on with form and understanding you know what your body's doing so then when I went into Pilates I mean I was just doing it for core exercise because I have a week ish core just being very hyper mobile I always feel like I have to work a little bit harder just to keep myself from falling apart or like hyper extending um and then it just kind of became a an obsession because with dance you're used to thinking about 10 things at once when you're doing something and then Pilates kind of has that same kind of way about it um and then it just kind of took off from there of like oh wow I can do this uh give people proper form because as we all have seen when someone is doing terrible form it just irks us to the core and you're like oh my god don't why are you doing that so yeah so I kind of wanted to go into it from there of like let me help somebody 
with good form because I know I personally feel better when I do something correctly. Um, and it's kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of awesome. And then, yeah, so it kind of turned into Pilates and then, uh, and then obviously Equinox had an opening. So I was like, why not? Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Did you do, did you do your training through Equinox? Cause I know they no, have that training. No, I did it or... through, um, actually, I think at the time I didn't realize Equinox had a, a teacher training, uh, program, but I did it through, just one of the Pilates studios in Manhattan. Um, my friend who was a dancer, she went to the studio called Gramercy Pilates and then eventually just through word of mouth. And I was like, oh yeah, why not? And then, yeah. Cool. Are you still doing that predominantly? Hmm? Are you still doing that predominantly like Pilates and, and are you still dancing a little bit or no? Oh awesome? no, I, I got out of dance completely. Um, I think once I quit dance, that was when I was like, okay, let's get my, let's get certified. And yeah, so did that. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I, you mentioned earlier about basically you being very flexible and mobile. And I've, I've trained dancers in the past. I've trained Lauren. You remember Lauren, uh, the old, old Pilates instructor as well. And the biggest thing always was, and when I've trained you, it's like, all right, you're, you have great mobility, but how about we maybe not move your pelvis all the way <laughs> you know all the way or breathing in. differently yeah can we like so that's the thing too can you can you touch upon that like what's okay whenever you get a new client um or when whenever a friend of yours or whatever wants to learn about pilates how do you teach breathing like how how is that normally taught in the pilates world when you have your client um Ugh, God, this thing, this is like a whole a whole thing a whole rabbit hole you can go down on this one um I mean obviously what work, helps a lot is just tactile teaching um I guess I mean you notice a lot a lot of times other people's like people are a belly breather a chest breather or just their breathing is totally flipped or something so um I think it's teaching friends or whatnot cues definitely make a difference like i can say one thing 10 different ways and it's like the ninth time is when it hits properly on someone how to breathe but most of the time when it's teaching someone how to breathe it's like put your hands around your rib cage um just feeling how you're inhaling and exhaling um and then as you start to feel you know on the exhale your ribs are coming together start to like bring your belly button to your spine so i mean that's one way of doing it or lying on their back is a little bit easier to feel because you just feel your stomach drop or if you're on hands and knees you're exhaling so you have to work against gravity so it can go different ways so there are many ways for you to teach it basically yeah, i hope i'm Very answering nice. this no no you're, that's great <laughs> because the thing when when it comes to i think us as um working with strength or just strength work you and I have had the conversation of, you know, I personally, when I, when I taught you or when I was teaching anyone else, it's like, okay, I want you to breathe into your belly. And once you have that 360 breath, which I guess is all, all ties into, you know, also in Pilates, they're like, you want a 360 breath, but you want to brace, not pulling the belly button in kind of like bracing against it. Like you have a weight, like an imaginary belt around you and you're trying to like brace against it to create more intra-abdominal pressure um and i've i've recently had a session yesterday with uh with someone at equinox and they do pilates and i said all right before we do anything let's kind of turn off the the pilates mentality of breathing because you want to have as much intradominal pressure and you know tightness to you know preserve your lower back when you're lifting weights you know it doesn't have to be a million pounds or anything but just in general because you want to be able to continuously progress so I think that method of breathing is really beneficial. And I think in Pilates, it's very good for when you're doing like, when I, when I took Pilates years ago, it was like bridge up. And I'm so used to like keeping everything so tight. And I just went straight up with my hips. And then I forgot who it was. They're like, no, they're like, no, no, no. I was like, wait, wait. I was like, what did I do wrong? They're like, no, I want you to like peel yourself up off the ground or something like that. And I'm like, I don't know how the fuck to do that. It's like, it's so, it's so foreign it, to me. Yeah. It's interesting. Different. I would say with the, the breathing part, which is wild, it's, it's the complete reverse 
mm-hmm. just rotating to Pilates. And then even just as you said, like the peeling up was really high. I remember I had, I had Lou come in, you all mm-hmm. remember Lou, the soccer player. He came in and he, he was dying after like 10 minutes. And it's just like, well, I'll swim bullets. One makes you breathing. <laughs> Because I guess a lot of people don't realize you have to you have to breathe while you're in Pilates and it gets you to you know move. But it's just I guess it's also like the length and the articulating that kind of gets a lot of people. So it's it's definitely interesting how the yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, hi, Marie. Hi. <laughs> hey. Um, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions in regards to um, like some exercises that. I've heard of, and then also like some exercises that you kind of want people to do and do correctly. Um, long story short, uh, what's one of the most underrated exercises um, in Pilates that you see? Like something that you get a lot of bang for your buck. Because as personal trainers, sometimes there are bigger things that you want to tackle, but these small steps help. For example, people don't know how to plank well, or they don't know how to engage the core well, like you guys were talking about, or something as small as like a pelvic tilt, they don't know how to do that. So these are the small things that have a bigger impact, um, but they, they're really underrated um, in personal training. So what about you for Pilates? What are some exercises that are pretty underrated in your book? Um, don't think too hard about it. Please. <laughs> It's like a, um, thousands of exercises that are going through your head. Right so now. many exercises going through your head right now. <laughs> well, what about, let, let's break it down a little bit. So like, what are some body parts or like some movement patterns? Um, like, let's say lower body or upper body. So maybe breaking it down like that. Like, what are some articulations that people just don't know how to do? Whether it's like utilizing their, their toes in order to do exercises of the foot in order to have a better foundation or like for hands and, you know, core work and things like that. Kind of what kind of what you said before, just teaching someone how to plank properly. I would see, uh, I would say, just scapular stability is a big one. I don't think a lot of people don't realize how their shoulder blade moves. Um, so literally, just doing like protraction, retraction, even it like it's. I had one client where she couldn't do it with her arms up. She only did it with her arms to the side because I get like her shoulders are naturally down. So the second she did that, it was more just like her shoulders would go up. So um, I think just that simple, simple movement is just being, just getting that awareness of like how your shoulder blade moves, how much like mobility you have there and how much like when you're in that plank, just feeling that protraction when you're planking, because I've, I've, I mean, we've also, we've had people come in at a plank and that like their shoulder blades are still squeezing together. You're like, no, you want to push away from the floor. And the second you get them in the right position, they're like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, that, that's what you're supposed to feel. <laughs> um, especially it's really funny when like skinny me teaches someone how to do it properly. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> don't, don't let the tininess fool you. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> like, that's just that, that simple one of just teaching protraction retraction of your shoulder blades it's just like so far into a lot of people so that that one is definitely one in pilates that we try to like kind of squeeze in there when it when it's a comp or even just clients you've had for a while just to like get the brain waking up on that one yeah um that brings up a couple of points but yeah i'll I'll start with this one whenever i speak to somebody or i'm having them do a plank in a comp and a complimentary you know, session or what have you, you notice that sometimes there are these compensations or these little things that people don't really think about. And then you have to say, all right, stop. We're going to continue to do this exercise. However, we're in a segue and kind of talk about how the shoulder moves, right? We got protraction, retraction, elevation, depression, you know, and then their minds get blown. And then you have to like break it down. I just want you to focus on depression right now. Cause right now it's a lot of this shrugging movement and we don't need that, right? We're rowing. We don't need to like tense up here. We need to drop down. And then we also need to squeeze. We need to retract. Um, so it's interesting that you brought that up because I do notice that um, that happens a lot, even for something um, we had another guest on a while back who was talking about pull downs and um, 
lat pull down specifically, but I noticed that sometimes people do the opposite. Like they hike up their shoulders and then they pull down kind of like elbows to rib cage, but keeping the shoulders up, which is completely not what the movement is supposed to be. Um, I've, we've all seen our can fair share. Angel, can you demonstrate that? I think I was trying to, but you know, YouTubers can, can kind of like <laughs> um, a little raise the roof <laughs> action. This the entire time. Yeah, yeah. No, they're like this. I, yeah. there's, there's a lady at, at oh, 76. Oh, 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 I know like this the whole time. It's like she's doing a muscle up, or, or she doesn't finish it. Like if she did the actual like muscle up motion with the lat pull down, I'll probably be okay with that. But she's just like. You know, and yeah. it's just not not efficient. I don't want to say wrong because very easily I, I, I like saying that's wrong, but it's like, you know, just not be dumb, efficient. But... It may be dumb. Nah, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll say we'll, it questionable <laughs> for questionable for practicality or functionality, maybe. There you go. I guess that's right? better. Throw I mean, words at the it. Other, the other thing is, too, it's Pilates is still one of those very foreign things to people like automatically and I I've been noticing this more and more the second I say I'm a Pilates instructor I've had people automatically sexualize it of like oh you want to give me that one-on-one -on -one? and it's like oh no suck a dick oh Sorry, wow you, they you <laughs> let's go <laughs> or then it's just like you know you go into a Pilates studio and it looks like you know I hate to say it, it looks like 50 shades of gray you know, mm. of like a catalyst, you know, so it's like, it gets really the springs and yeah. little fuzzy, you have little to fuzzies. Prove, yeah. You, the fuzzies. Yeah. The fuzzy. David um, knows it all too well, I guess. There you go. <laughs> it gets really frustrating because you have to prove 10 times more that this is actually a workout. Like I had some guy come in who automatically thought this was an entire joke. And I was just like, this no. is frustrating it's like you already you're not you're not coming in with an open mind it like it's 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 really hard so teaching like the the nuances and the the small details it sometimes get really it gets really frustrating because when you're on these machines i feel like it's a little bit easier to to get when it's with weights because like okay you can pick things up you lift them down you know it's not like there's springs there's fuzzies there's you know it's because pilates is a lot like it's mostly resistance. It's a lot of your body weight, but then you just add a little bit of a spring tension. Wasn't wasn't there Joe Pilates? Wasn't didn't he create Pilates for like for men? Men, he, right? He for yeah. Men. And I had this one person come in, and he was being all like macho, macho, and I was like, oh, this is created for for guys. And he's like, well, you know, there's a difference between guys and men. I'm like, are you? Oh scared? wow! <laughs> oh my god! What was his definition? Then, what a well, how did he define it then? Like, well, okay. Well, this was created for men. He's like, well, I'm I'm right. This wasn't, and I'm right. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Some people are interesting. <sighs> so it gets it gets really frustrating in in Pilates. Yeah. <laughs> There's so that, many. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Angel. No, it was just I don't know. Like there's there's a lot that people don't really understand and i feel like maybe like you know 76th street was one thing maybe it's not like that all around but maybe it would help if it's like a um kind of like the same attention that you draw to personal training in a gym you can draw the same attention to pilates for example like the way that the studio or where the placement of the studio kind of seems like it's hidden away and it's kind of like in this area where there's like a yoga studio across from it so it's like I don't know, and like hidden and automatically people are like, oh, it's just like yoga. And you're like, right, right. Like the placement of it wasn't with everything else. Right. Versus if it was in the middle of the floor or on the floor, just mm. over to a side where a you side, can have like yeah. a controlled environment, but it's still an open space, yeah. you know, that might make it seem different. Right. And then people's perception of what it is or what they can benefit from it will be completely different. Right. It's true. I put mean, the reformer next to the squat rack. Happy I day. Mean, a couple day. of couple of squats, and then go right next to it and do your exercise. Do your uh, what do you call it? The hundreds. Yeah. No. There's there's literally. Yeah. No. There was one client. Me and David um have a, a client in, in common, and like I was having her do squats on one of the machines. It's like you just load the springs differently, and then you're literally like got the bar, 
usually like the roll down bar, you have it on your shoulders instead. It's sprung from below and then you can do squats this way, but uh, yeah. I, um, it's, it's definitely true. Like placing it differently. Like I've gone to, I mean, we've all been to different locations and automatically depending on where it is, it definitely changes the perspective, like going to sports club. I mean, their Pilates studio is huge, right? It's the same floor as the yoga studio, but it's big, open, so much light. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is some of them in the machines they have, cause balanced body, um, is meant for taller people. And then at 76th street, they have grots, which is not meant for a six foot two man. It struggles like narrow. And then I'm just like, like moments like these, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to give you because you're six foot four. Do you change it into like a Pilates <laughs> mat session? What? Would you have to change it into like a Pilates mat session? Then it turns into that. And then when it's mm. that, then it's like, you know, then it's like, okay, what would I, why would I be paying $110 for this? And you're like, oh. uh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, yeah, we, I, I've gotten that. I've gotten that uh statement before about about shit like that and it's like to form off for 20 minutes while i'm up yeah paying. and i'm yeah. just like and they're like well, well you know i could be doing this amount i'm like yeah but you're not gonna be doing it right yeah but then i had i then had one person and she's like when you get those people you're like all right let me just show you the door yeah here's the door know, like there was one guy i had who did crossfit but it was kind of one of those people that kind of threw himself into it and like you could tell they weren't engaging it, but they're doing it anyway. And then I had him on and I was doing certain exercises. He's like, oh, my back is hurting. I was like, okay, well, can you draw your stomach in? And he's like, oh, I am, but my back is still hurting. Or meanwhile, like you have no concept from your head to your toe. And then he just wanted to like rush through things. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to get you through this. I don't, okay. And so to that point as well, right? When, whether it, whether it's like a defense mechanism to get out of it or to not do it or to prove he doesn't think he needs it. You said if he's on his back on the reform of the Cadillac and there's springs, right? So there's maybe not a direct load placed on his body, but he's going against resistance along the board of the, of the reformer. But you think that, and he's got quote back pain, but if he's doing CrossFit, he's very most likely loading a huge a huge or heavier loads on his body or placing a lot of stress on his body whether it be deadlifts push press whatever so it's it's interesting where there's pain. so but if you get pain at certain movements that are probably breaking down or showing your asymmetries or deficiencies those are probably very present when you're doing crossfit is that that's pretty fair to say right oh yeah 100 percent. i think it was just like one of those things where you can tell like the CrossFit mind of just like blasting through things. I mean, I'm not the saying time. Let's just go. Like, Come on. Yeah. But it's like, it's literally that I think for him, his mental, I was like, I just wanted to like slow things down. And I think in his, that that's where it was, where it's like, okay, I'm going to slow this down. Cause you have to feel the resistance because mm. you can't fly through this. And I think it was for him. It's like, okay, well I'm, I'm, I don't like this. It's like, well, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. There's, my um my girlfriend is also an instructor and i was a guinea pig when she was doing her hours of education and learning so in the beginning i wasn't very open about it very i'm very honest about saying that i, I wasn't yeah. it took me a while for me to get my head around it and it and one reason was because it was always humbling because like you mentioned if it's if trunk stability is an area of opportunity for you or a weakness it highlights that it humbles you and it really highlights that and as humans i it's maybe in the fitness professional world of like, like ourselves, we're able to say, you know what? I have weaknesses, A, B, and C. I'm going to work on A for the next couple months and whatever. But maybe for most humans, we don't like, we don't feel comfortable being shown that we're weak or something, yeah. right? We're in a very competitive world. We live in the New York market, which is very competitive. So why would we do something which constantly reminds us that we're weak? At least that was sort of my first impression on why I struggled to enjoy it because and then it's also different when you work out with your partner. That's got a whole other element of like dynamics. So, um, but my trunk stability is still somewhat weak, but was weaker back then. And she would exploit it. She'd be like, you need to do this, your core this. She'd also give me like 10 commands when she's also a dancer. So she, like you said, dancers can take on the five different um, cues or 10, right? And, and then I think, did you touch on neutral spine is different in training to Pilates as well, right? So that also 
throws me off. But it's a complete like whoop. right. So do yeah. neutral spine. I am no. It's this. I'm like oh, hang on, hang on. Like it's taking me a while. But I think it's there was also um a nfl he's retired now an nfl athlete I, i'd love to find the video and share it with the group and everything but this guy was in insane shape and i never forget his uh his quote when he was doing pilates in the video he said this is the hardest workout i've ever done right and the guy could push pull clean whatever how many pounds was very in shape and again high level athlete but pilates got him he's like his quote was this is the hardest work i've ever done and he was sweating buckets but it goes, as you said, if you were to rush through a movement on Reformer or, uh, or Cadillac, oh, sorry, the Reformer, sorry. Um, yeah, it's like anything, any movement, right? Like with squats, if you were to do a half rep, if you were just to rush it and, and do shit for reps, it, it, it translates to every movement. So I think it's, um, I, where was I going with this? Just to say that professional athletes, that when they do it and they give the time, there's also, uh, I'm a big tennis fan and Andy Murray was, when he was rehabbing, was very sworn to doing Pilates for his recovery and was like, same thing. I wish I did this sooner, you know? And um, Didn't Kobe do Pilates? I would, oh, uh, LeBron, Kobe doing I, I want to say LeBron yeah. James was a lot of Pilates, yeah. no? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've, I've, I've seen videos i think of him like chatting about how how he's added pilates to his regiment i don't know i want to say lebron does a lot i guess go on sir marie yeah i just, i think it's 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 also one of those things i think in the past maybe five years i mean the fitness culture has just blown up completely and i think just a lot of people think like okay if it's a fast workout and i'm sore every single day and I'm like, well, then it's working. And I think it's just like that gets into a lot of people's mind. Yeah. Mind sets, yeah. And yeah. like Pilates hasn't, like it's only blown up in the last 10 years. It's still considered like pretty new, I guess to say. Um, and I think that's just like part of it. Of like, okay, well, Pilates, you have to actually think about it. And it's so funny too, because my, my roommate, she's, in uh she's a project manager so for her she's in a very stressful high stressful job and uh she read this that uh like for anything like so she likes high intensity workouts and it's it it was like she read that people who are in high stressful jobs they like the high intensity workouts because they're used to the high intensity it's go 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 there's no time yeah the second it's like you have something where you actually have to think about it it's kind of jarring and i think i think that's also part of it too of like okay no you actually have to pause for a second breathe think about what you're doing and i think a lot of people don't you know what i mean it's like kind of a hard it's concept. the biggest thing i think it, it, to your point is there's so many there, there's so many influences or influencers on like on the gram on you know just in, in on magazines that it's everything is like go 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 if you're not sweating you're not doing it right if you're not right. sore as fuck the next day you didn't do anything you know and and that's that's when i think the go 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 mentality comes from too it's like no it you don't have to be crazy sore you will if you're a beginner i think it's fair to say if you're a new newer person into the fitness industry you will get pretty sore all the time but that doesn't mean you need to stay sore every fucking day, you know, every time you're working out and you need to stop and think of like, wait, no, I need to do this right. And if I want to do it right, I need to have adequate rest because once your body's fatigued, um, what's the, what's the term that people say? You, it go, your body goes through the uh, path of least resistance. Is that, is that the, the term, right? It's like, once you're fatigued, your body's just going to go, in a weird place, not the one, not the place we want to do it. Right. Um, and second that requires rest. If you're doing a heavy five RM, you're going to need two minutes at least. And some people are like for two minutes, what the fuck am I doing? They're just, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. And I've, and I'm in the world of reps of five to six, anything over six, something like eight or 10, I'm dying. You know, it's like, Oh shit. But just because it's, you know, it takes time, especially to do it right. Yeah, I think it's, I, it comes down to no one wants to slow down <laughs> or like, I mean, that goes through life. But yeah, I think when it's like a workout, it's like, oh, no, I have to go fast and I have to do it. It's like, no, you need to pause for a hot second. 
think about it, won't blow your mind, but <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what are some exercises that you do in comp sessions that you find are really valuable for some of your clients? Like, um, in general, because sometimes people might for for the person who's coming in, they don't really know what to expect from Pilates, and they are just trying to get quote unquote in shape. What are some exercises that are go-tos for you? Um, I would say one of them being just to curl up on the reformer because you have the straps in your hands. So you have to like, you feel the tension when you curl up. Um, that one is a big one because uh, the second, like y'all know shoulders are going up. I mean, no matter what it is, like you'll, you'll see, you'll have them do it do whatever exercise it is and you're like oh no they need to get the shoulders down so it's interesting seeing them do a roll a curl up with straps and you're like okay can you reach this further away from you and the second you're they're like oh my god i was like yeah you're gonna feel like i'm, I'm not gonna say your serratus because that's gonna that's too much but i'm just like oh yeah you're feeling this kick. I'm like yeah but that's what you want to feel when you curl up even though like without the tension it's gonna it you're not gonna feel much but you're gonna feel that you should feel that so so that's a big one um because already you can see the like the shaking, the the breathing. I was like, all right, we're working. The breathing has gotten harder. Okay. Um, and then I think it was another one. Just any balance work on the reformer? Oh, actually, no. What's a big one? Um, doing a plank on the reformer. So it'll be like your hands are on the bar. You're on one spring. Oh, and that's a great one when they think like more springs are like, oh, more tension. I'm like, oh, complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be like, um, hands will be on the bar. Your feet will be up against the shoulder rest. And so you have to like hold this plank and you literally have to like keep I've done that your one. body to like keep you in. And then like a, you know, an yeah. ab roller, you'll press out and then you have to like pull it back in. So that that's a big one. And everyone's like, holy shit. And I'm like, yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the two I can think of that are really shocking to a lot of people. It's like, it's, welcome to Pilates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It seems like a lot of core work. Like that's what most people are just definitely missing. And I think it, the same holds true for PT. Um, that and glutes. I think that most people can benefit. Like they're just like, oh, I want to get in shape. It's like, all right, core, glutes. And then the rest will follow after that. Um, all of us, so David myself and Jacques are different in regards to our paths when it comes to coaching um, as personal trainers and as coaches. Uh, how does the, how do things differ between instructor to instructor in regards to Pilates? Is it something similar? Do you guys have like a relative similar mindset and then you kind of branch out from there? Is it your backgrounds that um, you go into Pilates with that kind of differentiates uh, one Pilates instructor from another? Um, yeah, I think definitely I was one person in our studio who wasn't, didn't have a dance background. Um, so I, she did more, um, I think she did mixed martial arts and weight training. At 76? Yeah, Veronica. Yeah, yeah, she did martial arts, stuff like that. Wow, that's cool. So she did that. Um, so her training was definitely different to mine, Ashley. Ashley was a dancer. Um, yeah, I mean, mostly I feel like even all the dancers had a different way of doing it. Um, but I think it, it, collectively everyone kind of had the same mental or way of doing it i would assume um but it was always interesting being in the studio with who else was teaching and you can and you can just hear like the tone might be a little different well i mean that goes without saying everyone's tone is different but um i think just like their flow or yeah like the, the little things i would guess i would so say yeah, it seems like there's like little nuances sometimes even with coaches like the the way that they articulate the cues 
is different than another coach. For example, one of either David or yourself said something about like peeling your back up off the ground, um, which is something that I wouldn't say, but I would try to say like um, lift each vertebrae up from the ground in a sequential order and then do the opposite and just drop them down, you know, sequentially. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely can see how sometimes the background can influence that, but also um, the, how you communicate cues and things like that. I, I, I'll let Jacques take over from here because I know he has some questions. I mean, you've touched on some of it already, but what are some of the other misconceptions that, or, or, or if you could have some examples of misconceptions that clients have had or members have had, and then what have been some of the more effective ways that you have broken those down? You mentioned the spring, for example, but if you had other other examples. So ask that one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> there, there is, there is, there's on, a few... So if there are, what are some of the biggest misconceptions about Pilates and how, and how do you typically break those down or break the barrier of those misconceptions? Um, there are times I've probably given too much information to people and it like blows their mind and makes them really intimidating. I'm like, I swear to you, it's not it's a lot of information. Um, I mean, as the misconception being like, oh, it's like yoga or mm. it's only, only dancers do this or only old ladies do this or, you know. Um, like when someone says that and you get them in the room, besides them being six foot four, possibly, and they've been difficult to do the, the reform, I guess what I can tie in with this is whether it be that sort of person or how, how does the programming aspect become of it? Because in, in personal training, um, I think when I speak for three of us, our mindset typically says, all right, can I get this person to squat properly, to hinge properly, to push and most likely pull. When it comes to Pilates, what's the the thought process when you get someone for the first time or how do you, what's that thought process look like? I mean, I mean, we have our PCI forms. I'm, I'm sure you guys have something different. Um, but you basically what's like PCI? Fill out, yeah, what's... The, you fill out the questionnaire of like, okay, what are you working on your goals or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if it's like, you know, I want stronger core. Um, to tone up. I'm sure you've heard that one. Oh, tone up. Yes, lose weight. I'm like, oh, okay, like shape up. Um. So funny um and it i, I mean it, it it always comes down to like okay what can we give them that's already gonna i guess murder a muscle group off the bat because again <laughs> we you gotta like prove it that this is where and it's uh it, it pisses me off so much but if it's like someone like six four lucky enough i've had tall clients and they're they're like for it so it's you know i'm like okay you you know this is gonna be tough um but it, it definitely it's like depending on which machine so it could be like the reformer or the cadillac and already i i, I know like okay we're gonna go straight into this exercise because you're already gonna feel something so i think it's just like okay which exercise are you gonna feel the most right off the bat and it's literally like okay like if we're on the cadillac we're gonna do this if we're on the reformer we're gonna do this so that's kind of how we how you bring it up or the wonder wheel is that the name of it or do i get it no. do i have it wrong david no one isn't there like, one machine called the wonder up. wheel the magic circle the ma <laughs> david i don't think this is a party studio where you went to it's like a pole dancing class or something one of my clients told me that she had a magic it was circle a wonder wheel my bad <laughs> My, my client told me, I was like, we we're preparing for virtual sessions. I was like, what kind of exercise equipment do you have? And she's like, this, uh, two, one, two pound, one, three pound and a magic circle. I was like, magic circle. And I look it up and it's like, there's something completely different that it's okay. not an actual right. exercise I got it, tool. I got it wrong. That's yeah. um, Wonder but, Wheel is some completely different. I call it Pilates ring, right? No, no not, I, I was, I was talking about Cat, no, fuck. There's one where it's like a seat, but it's curved. That people do like side bends on it. 
Oh, and you press it. It's got springs you can, like, at the bottom. Press, uh, the it's like a huh? Is wait, is it a Pilates thing? Yeah, it, you. It was in the is studio. That, wait, 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 is it the barrel? Yes. The big hump. The barrel. The Wonder Wheel. You the call Wonder it? Wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> sold him on that. That was Lauren. Wonder probably. Wonder she sold him on wait, the wait, Wonder Wheel. Wait, <laughs> Wonder Wheel is that yoga wheel too, Ooh. right? It's like you, you like lay on it and like extends your your uh, upper back. I don't believe anymore, David. I don't. Oh, the, spine, the spine corrector. Oh, yeah, check this out. One day. Yeah, yeah, I, gotta, I gotta look at the library now as well and I see. I hate all of you. David's making stuff. Fuck David's gonna have you. the magic wand of waterfall or something in a minute. Yeah, Lauren sold you on that one, and she just had you walk about your life thinking it's called the Wonder Wheel. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't know. I wonder what she but, called. It. Um, one one quick question because we Angel touched upon the different types of modalities and Pilates depending on trainers or different instructors. What's the difference between a classically trained Pilates instructor and a what's the other school of thought? Is it a contemporary. modern contemporary? Yeah, what's the difference between that? Um, it really is just it's just the certain movements. Uh, it really isn't that much different. Um, I would say like the more classical Pilates would be. Um, you're really like if you're curled up you're constantly like your t your pelvis is tucked the entire time that would be considered more classical and then the more the contemporary is when it turns into more like a neutral pelvis so it really just comes down to like certain exercises it really isn't that much different it's like you might you're just more in a tuck in your pelvis you'd be more classical um, would there be a, a, a reason why one is better or worse than the other i mean to hold your pelvis in neutral like you need to be doing Pilates for a good amount of time uh, to understand it because we all have that natural curve. So, you know, neutral pelvis, you're going to keep the natural curve in your low back. Um, and so if you don't know how to hold yourself in that way, you're going to naturally like arch and then feel it in your low back. So that's why the original way was to like keep the pelvis tucked. So you're feeling your core working. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even like, even if I do my natural curve, I just need like a smidge tuck just because hypermobile, I'll naturally, like if I'm standing, I naturally sink into my low back. So I just, I just add a little tuck in there, but yeah, that's, that's literally just the position of the, how your pelvis is. In. And then there's certain exercises that are more contemporary that are not classical. So it really isn't that much. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to touch on, so you're no longer, are you no longer with Equinox, correct? Yep. Um, what? So with... Deuces. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Uh, with, so with you no longer being with the company, what does, can you tell us about what you're uh, envisioning or what your career trajectory looks like now that you're not with the company anymore? Yeah. Um, so right now I'm actually teaching independently. Um, yeah, so doing it independently. Um, I don't know if you remember Laura Cruz. She was at 76 Street for a bit. She's, she was like with the company for like eight years. I know she was a Pilates manager at a printing house at one point. But she, like, she started at 76, then left, and then she came back. But... Oh, she was working at Antoine, I, I want to yeah. say, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. And... yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah, got yeah. a baby. Yeah, she had a baby. A little baby. Um, but the place that she's... Uh, I think she's still, I haven't seen her, but um, the place she went to train independently, that's where I kind of, I was like, oh yeah, like I, I've been to this space before, so why not? Um, and it's on Balanced Body, which is my brother. Oh, I know the app, yeah, yeah. What I got trained on. Um, oh yeah, that's another difference between classical and contemporary is the, the machines. So Parats is what we have, or what 76th Street had, and Peak, which is another one that's more like classical because the spring load is crazy um and then mm. balanced body is one of the contemporary ones so that's, that's another difference are there but, are there people that are very much like oh i only do contemporary or like oh i'm classically trained <laughs> contemporary not so much but more the classical like you'll get some diehards and like, oh yeah, yeah but are they like you know uptight and shit not really but they're crazy strong like there's a woman <laughs> um i forgot her name but She's, she has a place called The Ranch, and it's basically... The Ranch? Well, the Ranch. There, I know that sounds like kind of crazy, but um, I forgot her name, but she has a full-on 
cla uh, classical way of teaching. Well, I think what's really cool, her machines are like bright red or leopard print or something, but it's Grotz machines. And it's like for continuing practitioners and it's like, she takes a certain amount, it's, it's wild, but she's like in her sixties and like in better shape than everybody. Like it's, uh -huh. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing independently now. Um, so that's been, it's been kind of nice to be <laughs> independent. But now you're yeah. like your own, own boss. Like I know in, like even at a big company, it's we're kind of our own bosses in a way like you know it is a small little business but there's always that umbrella of are you gonna add 10 20 sessions on this week and yeah, it's like I nah feel, bro i think also a big one is i definitely get caught up in the details it's my it's not the best but um it's gotten better but i think just sometimes when you're working with a bigger company they're like just get the move that just get them moving just give them the hard work out blah 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 and it's like well try I, the numbers out yeah yeah, yeah. And it's, like it's not it's not what it's about of just powering through and like get a good work i'm like no because i love the breaking down of it like i love the details i love the nuances i mean i know that's not everybody but um it's kind of nice to now be in a situation where like oh i can actually break this down and get back to just enjoying it instead of like okay we're just doing this to bang out numbers and get client but I, it's just like it's not just you know it's not just about not that genuine part. in a way yeah so doing that and then the possible thought of going to physical therapy like going into physical therapy and uh just getting more knowledge of the human body and then just you know the whole neurological to the physical and go full on nerding out that's a bus that's it's been on the the thought process of going in that direction so no that's that's cool i think it's been like you mentioned the rentals of new york city covid being that effect. i think covid has in the fitness industry also enabled us to see what life is or could be without said um company or, or 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 what's up david umbrella yeah, it's it's just hey, this is what it would be like if you were on your own, you know, as some sort of taster. So there's been some positive outlets in that, and um, I think the other thing as well that has probably been a challenge. I don't know if you can attest to this, but I guess personal training can get off lucky in this sense that you can go to the park, grab a couple of bands, a little dumbbell, and go crush a workout, have a TRX, Pilates. It's hot unless the building has the reformer or, or the, so I know my girlfriend had a couple of clients that had that in their gym in the building, but wow. if the, yeah. So, but that's a, that's a relatively new thing. A lot of gyms and buildings is just the training aspect of it. Correct. And that's very rare to have the reformer or Cadillac kind of like in the building. So, but right now you, most buildings still aren't allowing trainer or Pilates instructors in the building. So it's, it, I can imagine that's a hard concept for you too unless as it sounds as though you're obviously doing in person but like if you're like you said you're you're not focused on the, the on the equipment but you feel that or maybe i'm interpreting that you feel you can get more out of a session with a client if they are with more focus on those equipments as opposed to being matt pilates or there can be more variety right this it's like anything more tools more variety to a sense but it, has that been a challenge that you like haven't been able you've been limited with equipment for for certain aspects of the of the pandemic yes um i was lucky enough that i did have certain clients that still did virtual sessions or continued with me doing virtual because they didn't mind doing um mat and then also too there were certain clients that i can i can throw some like crazy mat stuff at them and like really have fun with it um but then i did have clients who were like you know let me know when the gym the gym opens back mm. up because they they wanted the equipment they didn't want to do that so i mean that was that was an interesting one to have that part of it and then the second gym's open i was like okay we can go back to doing equipment stuff so there is the the people that okay if i'm paying this price i want to and i'm paying for the equipment mm -hmm. and it's just again people are like oh matt pilates and it's like well no it takes a lot of strength but to do you know it's like i think it's anything it's like when you're feeling you know, there's some kind of equipment or some kind of something to help you. It feels like you're actually doing something instead of just like 
oh, I have to like think about how I'm holding myself and like, then you know that that body awareness comes in and it's like it it takes a hot second like i mean i've been doing pilates for i mean before i got trained i was doing it since the age of 15. Oh, so wow. it's like i've built that awareness foundation, yeah. even like from dance it's like you build that foundation and so like it's going to take a hot second and then you know for some people you know you can teach it over and over again it still doesn't click yeah but like <laughs> if longer. they're on a machine or they're lifting a weight they're like okay i'm actually doing something i feel something but if it's just like a mat it kind of yeah. so psychological isn't it yeah so cool. this, is, this is why going into pt and like the psychological it breaks it down it's like huh, yes <laughs> um <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining us marie uh if anyone who's listening would like to you know maybe train with you or if you have any resources where can people find you um, I'm at Studio 26 at 250 West 26th Street on the fourth floor is the studio. So yeah, that is that is where I'm at on the weekends. Cool. Instagram handle, Facebook, oh. anything like that, website. Graham, come on. You went straight to the location, I'm sorry. but he's like, yo, look at this. <laughs> come so find me. Um, no, so my Instagram, you can laugh at my Instagram handle, but it's a it's a it's hip swish ninety two. <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, yeah, that's that's my Instagram handle, where to find me, and yes. Slide in that DM for Pilates. For Pilates, <laughs> yes. Perfect, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Thank Marie. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> cool. That was awesome. awesome. Awesome episode. We learned a lot, um, and we need to continue to have more diverse guests. I feel like Pilates, we just like scratched the surface. Right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we need to get more Pilates instructors and people that you said are just in the broader spectrum of this industry. Um, that's awesome. That's good. It's Hopefully our listeners will appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was good. Good episode. All right, so we'll wrap it up. Thanks, guys, for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good Bye. one. Anchor, the podcast app. Why you should be using it. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will additionally distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to meet a podcast all in one place. That being said, be sure to check us out on anchor.fm forward slash the trainer feed. Once again, anchor.fm forward slash the trainer feed. Bye.